After spending some time relaxing on the beaches of Koh Rong, we headed back inland to our final destination in Cambodia, Siem Reap. There, we visited Angkor Wat, aka the hottest place on earth, and spent some time exploring the surrounding temples. Angkor Wat is the largest religious structure in the world and was also famously used as a filming location for Lara Croft Tomb Raider. We also had a wander around the city, exploring the markets before ending our time in Cambodia with a visit to Pub Street. From here, we'll be taking a bus to Bangkok, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on our adventures around Thailand. We just made it to Siem Reef, we just got off the six hour bus. Um, we're currently in the tuk tuk on the way to our hostel. It's Thursday night now and we're only here until Monday. And we're only really here to go to Angkor Wat and we don't want to really do it on a weekend because we think it'll be busier. So we've got to get up bright and early tomorrow. We just checked into our hostel. First impressions are really, really good. So the dorms are absolutely massive. Our beds, the curtains do go all the way across. And also the top bunk, which is what I'm on, has steps to go up it. It's not just a ladder, which is really annoying when you're in a hostel and you're above someone and you have to climb up a ladder. It's clunky, it's awkward. None of that here. They have massive lockers for you to put your stuff in with a rail over the top so you can hang stuff up as well which I've not seen in any hostels yet and the bathrooms are also huge they have a ton of like mirrors hair dryers and then they also have a washer and a dryer in the bathroom so you can do your own laundry which is something I've not seen in a hostel yet either so so far really really positive Although, bear in mind, we've not actually spent the night there yet. We've literally just walked in, dumped our stuff and come back out. So things might change, but fingers crossed. <laughs> we just found this supermarket, which was right over the road from our hostel. And it's so good. There's loads of fresh fruit, loads of drinks, like baked goods. And to be honest, it's going to do really well because we've been severely lacking in nutrients since we arrived in Cambodia. We've come to a barbecue restaurant, so we picked our meat, we picked our vegetables and things, and then they bring out like a little griddle, and then we cook it ourselves. We've never done one before. They also had like crocodile meat on the menu, which I was tempted by, but because I've never cooked crocodile before, I have literally no idea how to cook crocodile meat, so I didn't really want to risk it. We didn't really think this through. It is so hot to be sat under a grill. <laughs> so far in Southeast Asia, we've managed to not get sick. If we have, it's been like cold or whatever. But nothing from food. But if we are going to get sick, it's probably going to be from the time when we're cooking the food. But it tastes really good. So here's hoping we don't get sick. Five little prawns on the grill. Grill, grill. Pull it to bug on the wall. Ding, ding. Will they be making us ill, ill, ill? <laughs> We've um, given these prawns a really long time to cook. They look done. 
that pink, but who knows? Thank you for deshelling my shrimp. Kind of seems a shame that a shrimp that big comes down to only this much. This is how you eat your shrimp if you're not a baby. Head off. Mm, mm, mm. That was so tasty, but we're so full now. And also, my skin feels like greasy from all the oil. So I think our plan is to head back to the hostel, have a shower and call it a night. So since we arrived in Siem Reap yesterday, we've had so many people offering us tours of Angkor Wat, but not like tours of the structure, just transportation between all the different temples nearby. And we don't really want to pay for that because we know that you can just get a grab to get here and then walk around the temple complex, which is a similar thing we did when we went to Prambanam Temple uh, at Jogjakarta. When we got in our grab this morning, the taxi driver was like, do you guys have tickets? And we were like, no. And he said, you have to go to this other place to buy tickets. And in our experience, usually that's a scam. That's like someone trying to take you to his mate to buy tickets rather than the official ticket office. So we were like, no, no, just go to Angkor Wat, please. And we looked online and it turns out he's right. You can't just turn up at Angkor Wat and buy tickets. But we bought our tickets online uh, in the grab on the way. And that was absolutely fine. But rather than there being a ticket office here where they come and check them, there's actually a checkpoint on the road before you enter the complex that checks them for you. So make sure when you do come, either buy tickets in advance or buy them online like we did. So Angkor Wat, like Prambanam and Brabador is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It was actually a Hindu temple and then with the rise of Buddhism it was converted to a Buddhist temple and it's the largest religious structure in the world. And it is apparently the hottest place on earth. So Angkor Wat is impressive in a really different way compared to like Borobudur and Prambanan. Those two are quite impressive just because of the grand scale of them, like the height of them and stuff. Whereas this covers a lot more ground, like width and length ways, not height wise, but it's really impressive in the way that we're on top of the structure now. And this is like a courtyard and it's split into all these different areas. So it's different, but still impressive. There are a ton of temples around Angkor Wat. We thought that they were all in the same Angkor Wat complex, a bit like how Prambanan had a bunch of temples in that complex. Turns out that isn't true. And it is quite a walk to the next one along. So we had grab drivers coming up to us and being like, oh, it's a very far walk to the next temple. And we're like, no, nah, it's fine. Which it actually is because it's about half an hour, but it's very hot. So if you're not, big on walking, then maybe just get in the grab. 
there was this tour guide or groundskeeper or something riding around on a bike near the Angkor Wat complex. And he just randomly stopped, got off his bike, and then picked something up off the floor and waved it at us. And we were like, what is that? And it turns out it was the tiniest turtle I've ever seen. It was so small. And then he just tottered on his way and just popped it back in the river. So this one is Kravan Temple. This one was built in the 10th century. So it's actually older than Angkor Wat, which was built in the 12th century. It's another Hindu temple. And when we came here, they checked our ticket, which we got to enter Angkor Wat. So I guess the ticket for Angkor Wat also gets you admission into all of the other temples in the nearby area, even though it's not in the Angkor Wat grounds. So to get to this temple, we've had to walk through a village because it's sort of like nestled in amongst the houses of the village. And everyone keeps looking at us and smiling. They're so friendly. Well, that one was a write off. I guess you can only access that one when it's dry. So we're probably gonna head to the next temple and then go back to the hostel. It's very hot. temple is called something that I cannot pronounce. And it's an old Buddhist monastery which was built around the same time as Angkor Wat. It's really cool because it's kind of like more ruins which I always think is pretty cool and it also looks like the perfect place to play like a real life game of temple ruin. This last temple that we're visiting is called Taprom Temple and it's a 12th century Buddhist temple but it's kind of been taken back over by the jungle so there's really cool trees like growing up through the buildings and it's also where they filmed the Angelina Jolie um, Tomb Raider. Of all the temples that we've visited, this one's definitely my favourite. We're back, we're showered, we both feel much better now. We actually chose not to do a tour because we figured we'd be able to do it all ourselves. 
We paid in total 47,000 real for grabs there and back. And then it was $74 for the two of us for entrance to the complex and all the temples. There was a roughly seven and a half kilometer walk in between the temples, which is fine, but the heat did get to us quite a bit. And by the end of the day, we were ready to come back home because we were so hot. It's our last day in Cambodia today before we head to Thailand tomorrow morning. So we're gonna head to the markets and have a look what's there. Um, and then this evening we have a sunset tour booked with our hostel. So hopefully we'll be able to see a sunset because it's a bit cloudy. We came here the other night for $1 tacos and they were so delicious. And they also have this fun artwork. <laughs> So it's time for us to head back to our hostel now because we're going on the sunset tour, which starts in about half an hour. We'll probably come back to Pub Street later. Our sunset tour got cancelled because of the rain. Whilst the drink on Pub Street is quite cheap, the food is fairly expensive. Like, compared to the UK, it's quite cheap, but for Cambodian prices, it's relatively expensive. And the food seems like it wouldn't be that good. Like, we haven't tried anywhere, but a lot of places don't specialize in one cuisine. They all seem to have the same handful of them. So it's always Cambodian, Italian, grill, Japanese for some reason. So we're gonna go and find a street seller because we know for a fact that, that food's really tasty. Three dollars for both of those noodles and they were delicious. We got our 7-Eleven toasties for breakfast. <laughs> it's like 6.30 in the morning now, and we've got a bus to Thailand at quarter to eight, but we need to be waiting at the hostel an hour before. So we've got 15 minutes to get back and sit and wait for our bus. Although we have been awake since 4 a.m. because a couple of people arrived in our dorm and had no consideration for being quiet, so. But it's fine. Nine times out of 10, we're living in a hostel is absolutely fine. It's every now and then you get that one thing that ruins it, but we're leaving anyway.
when we got... Oh, I got bit. <laughs> yeah. Usually not. You don't nod anymore. I missed the days when you nodded. Right. Is this recording? Oh, look how small. So we've been in Siem Reap this whole time, wandering around, and there's a crocodile farm. I caved and bought a fan. Did you fall? No, it was a scare. <laughs> 